The Anunnaki created life in Africa and then spread out to Aztecs, the Mayans, Sumerian and Egyptian pharaoh civilizations. The Sumerian civilization lived in Mesopotamia between 5000 BC and 1750 BC. Their gods were called the Anunnaki. They had technology that was amazing for the time. Their gods were called those who from heavens to earth came. The Anunnaki genetically engineered humans to be their slaves, spread out across the globe. They also drove the Neanderthals to extinction in Europe because they made the best slaves. The Baltic Sea Anomaly was found in 2011. It's shaped like a spaceship and it has a 1000 foot trail. The Nebra Sky Disc is one of the oldest known representations of the cosmos and the Pleiades are represented in the top right. This was created in 1600 BC and it's from Nebra, Germany. This part of the sky must have been very important to them. The Pleiades are represented by the bull and early Europeans knew where they came from. Head binding is always done in Anunnaki controlled territories. Like I said before, the Anunnaki created humans for slave workers. This is the Sumerian creation myth, the Greek creation myth and also the Egyptian creation myth. When the Pleiadians came to Earth around 2000 BC, they was called the Hebiru or Hebrew by the Anunnaki. The first invasion failed with many prisoners taken. In the Turkish military, Pleiades means an ambush, so maybe they're giving us clues. This is represented by the taming of the bull in the Gilgamesh epic. After this victory, the Anunnaki celebrated their victory by inventing games like bull leaping, bull fighting. Also, if you notice where they stabbed the bull, is where the Pleiades are found in the constellation of Taurus. After this, a second attempt was made, and this was successful. They rescued the Hebiru, or Pleiadians, from Egypt. But in this second war, there was weapons of mass destruction used. Evidence for this can be found in the Sinai Peninsula. There is more evidence for a nuclear war in the Sumerian text. They described nuclear weapons being fired from Africa, a spaceport called Babel destroyed. This story is also told in Norse mythology as Ragnarok. Ragnarok in Norse mythology was the predestined death of the Germanic gods. Ragnarok in Norse mythology marks the end of the old world and the beginning of the new current world. Loki is always depicted differently to the other gods. In the prose Edda, Surtur will spray fire over the earth and burn the entire world. Sounds like a nuclear weapon. So in the Norse mythology, the final battle was with the giant. After the battle, the flames that he brings forth will engulf the earth. Surtur will come from the south with flames, carrying a very bright sword. This definitely sounds like a rocket. This is also very similar to the biblical stories of the angels with flaming swords who expelled Adam and Eve from paradise. Giants are also mentioned in Deuteronomy, a people great and many and tall as the Anakins, but the Lord destroyed them before them and then they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead. So is this the Pleiadians, the Hebiru, who dwelt in the stead of the Anunnaki? Only King Og survived, and they go into detail about his length. There was also mention of the Pleiades in the stories of Hannibal's crossing of the European Alps, when he said it is almost time for the setting of the Pleiades. Alexander the Great also observed UFOs in a battle. Gleaming silver shields swooped down and made several passes over the battle. Alexander the Great's story is also told in Islam, Dal Kuwari, and the story of Gog and Magog. Notice Alexander is depicted with horns on his head, and also a bull on the horse's rear. Alexander was supposed to have sealed an entrance to somewhere, but where was the entrance? But when the promise of my Lord comes to pass, he will make it level with the ground. 
pouring molten brass down some sort of cavern to block it up it seems like. The legend of Gog and Magog are also told in the Alexander Romance, which is a story of Alexander's life, but mythological. Goth and Magoth are kings of the unclaimed nations, blocked from returning by his new wall. Gog and Magog are said to engage in human cannibalism in the romances. So who is Gog and Magog? Gog and Magog, according to Romanized Jewish historian Josephus, are the Scythians, the Huns, Kazakhs, Mongols, or other nomads. The Huns and the Scythians united to try and take Europe from the Pleiadians, but failed. The Scythians lived in the Eurasian steppes from about the 9th century BC until the 1st century BC. The Huns' arrival is associated with the migration westwards of the Scythian people, the Alans by 370 AD. The Huns had arrived on the Volga, and by 430 AD, the Huns had established a vast, if short-lived, dominion in Europe. Attila the Huns' empire fell in 465 AD. The Khazar Empire went from 460 AD to 965 AD and the Akhenazis from 1000 AD to present day. The Anunnaki was masters of DNA manipulation, were the Mongols an Anunnaki cloned army? Is Allah the god of the Bible or is Allah the moon god of ancient Arabia? After the Anunnaki fled the earth, there was apparently a moon base they went to. Is this why you see so much moon worship in, in Islam? They pray by bowing towards a meteorite in Mecca. The Muslim holy month of Ramadan starts at the sighting of a new crescent moon. Islam seems to just spread from nowhere. This was all going on at the same time, the spread of Islam and the spread of Christianity. Attempts were made to take back Europe from the Pleiadians, the French Renaissance, the Bolsheviks. The US was awarded the Statue of Isis for siding with the Anunnaki. The British Empire outlawed slavery in 1838. Compared to the Soviet Union, that slaughtered 60 million Christians and enslaved the population. The Nazis were given highly advanced technology by the Anunnaki. And the Pleiadians give us Nikol Tesla and he invented the precision approach radar which won us World War II. The Cold War is this same ancient war fought for thousands of years, with the Russians on the side of the Anunnaki and the British and Americans on the side of the Pleiadians. The Sea Peoples are the Hebiru neighbour, the Etet ancient Egypt and other regions of the Mediterranean prior to and during the late Bronze Age collapse. No one actually knows who the Sea Peoples are. They invaded Anatolia, Syria, Canaan, Phoenicia, Cyprus and Egypt. Everywhere you can see a black dot, that was the major cities, towns that were destroyed. Civilizations wiped out, all within 50 years of each other. The Sea Pupils were recorded in Homer's Iliad and Odyssey and the Book of Joshua and Judges in the Old Testament. They were depicted with horns on the head. This is also the time of the Exodus and the Trojan War. The Sea People attacked in 1207 BC 
and again in 1177 BC, after which writing ceased everywhere apart from Egypt. The Medinet Harbu are the basis of virtually all significant discussions of them. Ramses III wrote of seven tribes that united against him. After they conquered, the sea people just vanished. They fled to places like North India and to Europe, also New Zealand and Japan. In 1200 BC, all these empires start to fall. The Canaanites, the Egyptians, The Dark Age, it takes 200 to 300 years to recover from this ancient nuclear war. Around 1100 BC to 800 BC is the rise of Greece. Now the Pelasgians are ancient people and the ancestors of all the Indo-European people. These people was known to illuminate and give the culture to Europe. About them is known little, or better to say nearly nothing. Virgil said, It is said that the first dwellers of our Italy were the Pelagians. Homer mentions the Pelagians allied with the Trojans in the Iliad. He also mentions the Pelagian Zeus of Dodona in the Iliad. They taught many Europeans how to build out of stone. Pelagian has come to mean more broadly all of the indigenous inhabitants of the Aegean Sea region and their culture, but they was Hellenized by the Greeks. The Pelasians were called the Sea People since they were skillful and free navigators. The Pelasians are also mentioned in, in the Odyssey and in the Iliad. It also appears that they did worship the bull, as did the Hebrews. Also at this time there was a lot of rape going on. The Sabrine women were raped by the founders of Rome according to its legendary history. Everywhere you find horned warriors in history. This is Heibiru civilizations. The Persian army was rumoured to number in the millions. Was this an Anunnaki cloned army again? The term Brahmin meant originally one possessed of Brahman a mysterious magical force widely known to modern anthropologists by the Milesian word manna. The Rig Veda is the oldest and perhaps most sacred of all Hindu scriptures. 
It contains the mythological origin of the Brahmin. The Matarabhata is one of the major two Sanskrit epics of ancient India. It talks of an ancient legendary war. Brahman is the core of the entire universe, so it can be considered the nucleus, hence Brahmastra directly translates to nuclear weapon the effects of which are described here. Voice activated rockets were used in this war. and artificially intelligent flying saucers. So were nuclear weapons really used? According to its history, 1,660,000,000 people died. The Ashkonitsis is the Anunnaki side and the Pandava is the Pleiadians. A Sumerian tablet found in Iraq describes when Enke launched the nuclear weapons. Nin Hursag delivered the charge before Enke and the fate of the people were sealed. The Sumerians refer to their gods as Dingur, which when spelled out resembles a multi-stage rocket. The ancient Egyptians also depict such a vehicle in the pharaoh's ascent to heaven. The Amarna tablets of the Heibairu conquest detail exactly what was going on. If you look at a lot of ancient symbols, you'll find a lot of reference to the Pleiadians. <laughs> 